Lecture 14, Impedance and Admittance Matrices. As in low-frequency electrical circuits, a matrix description for portions of microwave circuits can prove useful in simulations and for understanding the behaviour of the sub-circuit. So in this course, we are going to learn on the Z and Y matrices and also the S matrices. So the A, B, C, D and S parameters will be probably new to you. But it is very similar to the other two pop models for circuits you have seen before, which are the Z and Y matrices. So let us recap what Z matrices is. As an example of Z matrices, please consider this two port network. So you have port 1 with V1 and I1 and port 2, V2 and I2. So that Z here is your Z matrix reactance. The Z matrix description of this two port network can, de can be defined as V1, V2 is equal to Z11, Z12, Z21, and Z22. Because this is a this is a two-port network. That's why you have two by two matrix times with I1 and I2. Where your Zij is equal to VI over IJ. Let us see this example. Please determine the Z matrix for this T network. So you have port 1, V1 and I1, and port 2 with V2 and I2. So how do you get the Z matrix? So now, by applying the first equation repeatedly to all the four Z parameters, we will find that Z11 is equal to V1 over I1. Because you have your port 2, I2 is equal to 0. Your port 2 is open circuit. So that's why you will have Z11 is equal to ZA plus ZC. Next, for Z I, Z12. So Z12 is taking V1 and I2 as your source when your I1 is equal to 0. So that will give you V1 is equal to I2ZC. And finally, this will give you Z12 is equal to ZC. So Z21 is when you are considering V2 over I1, where your I1 is your source and your I2 will be equal to 0. So that will give you V2 is equal to I1ZC. And finally, you will get Z21 is equal to Zc. And finally, for Z22, you will have V2 over I2 when your I1 is equal to 0, or in other words, your pot 1 is open circuit. So this will give you Zb plus Zc. So by collecting all these with equations together, you will have your T network is equal to ZA plus ZC for Z11. So Z12 is equal to ZC, Z21 is equal to ZC, and Z22 is equal to ZB plus ZC. So notice that this matrix is symmetrical, where your ZIJ is equal to ZJI. For I is not equal to J. So it can be shown that Z will be symmetrical for all reciprocal networks. So why is the impedance matrix useful? For one thing, if a complicated circuit exists between the ports, one can conveniently amalgamate the electrical characteristic into this one matrix. Secondly, if you have a network that is connected in series, it would be 
easier to combine the set matrices. For example, consider this figure over here. You have V1 and I1 coming into the Z network. So your Z network consists of Z prime and also Z double prime, which is connected in series. And here you have port 2 with V2, I2. So from there, you can derive your equation. So you will have V1 prime and V2 prime is equal to Z prime times with I1 prime and I2 prime. And also you will have V1 double prime, V2 double prime is equal to Z double prime times with I1 double prime, I2 double prime. From the figure, we can see that your I1 prime is equal to I1 double prime. I1 prime is equal to I1 double prime because it comes from the same current, which is I1. And your I2 prime and also I2 double prime would be the same because it comes from the same current, which is I2. And your V1 over here is actually the addition of V1 prime plus V1 double prime. And your V2 is the addition of V2 prime plus V2 double prime. So summing the above two matrix equation would give you this long equation. So from this equation, note that your I1 is actually equal to I1 prime and your I2 is equal to I2 prime. Therefore, you will have V1, V2 is equal to Z prime plus Z double prime times with I1, I2. So from this result, we see that for a series connection, of two port networks, we can simply add the matrices to form a single super Z matrix. So Z is actually the addition of Z prime and Z double prime. Next, we have Y matrices. So Y matrices is for admittance. A closely related characterization is the Y metric description of a network. So you have port 1 with V1, I1 and port 2 with V2, I2 coming into the Y network. So by definition, you will have I1, I2 is equal to Y11, Y12, Y21, Y22 times with V1, V2. So your yij is equal to ii over vj. So comparing equation 4 and 1, we see that y is actually the reverse of z. So the y parameter description is actually useful when you are connecting the networks in parallel. So you have here y prime and y double prime where your y is actually the networks in parallel. So from this diagram, we see that i1, i2 is equal to i y prime plus i1 double prime and i2 prime plus i2 double prime is equal to y times v1, v2 where your y is actually the addition or the combination of y prime and y double. So z and y matrices for microwave networks. We can easily generalize this z and y parameter description for microwave networks and multiport networks. So at these terminal planes, which are also called the phase plane, Zn would be equal to zero so that the voltage on the nth transmission line would be Vn is equal to Vn plus 
exponent minus j beta n z n plus v n minus exponent plus j beta n z n which will give you vn is equal to vn plus plus vn minus and in is equal to in plus plus in minus. So for an impedance description, we are setting your in as the independent variable where you have v1, v2 up until vn is equal to your Z matrix Z11 up until ZNN times with I1, I2 up until IN. Or you have V is equal to Z times I. On the other hand, for an admittance description, you are choosing your VN as the independent variable. So you have I1, I2 up until IN is equal to your Y matrix times with V1, V2 up until VN. So the global characteristic of Z and Y matrices, there are two extremely important properties. The first one is that when you have ZIJ is equal to ZJI, and yij is equal to yji. This means that the matrices are symmetrical about the main diagonal for reciprocal network. So what does it mean by reciprocal network? It is a network where a source instrument and a measurement instrument can be exchanged between the two ports and the measured quantity remains unchanged. Next. Second property is that for a lossless network, you will have the real part of Zij is equal to zero and the real part of Yij is equal to zero. So in other words, for a lossless network, the Z and Y matrices are purely imaginary.